And we're back with another installment of Five Questions. Today, Patrick, Corey, here we are. I got 30 seconds. You're never, you have no flexibility. It's rigid. Yeah, I got five questions. The buzzer goes off. If I answer it, great. If I don't, then I'm an asshole. Right. So right. let's see what we got. Question number one today. Question number one. Um, maybe maybe your your fans won't like it as much. It's a local question. It's a local question. Um, we got about I don't know. I'm not going to count them all. Ten different options. Let's say non MLB uh, to see some baseball around us. We got Kingfish, Snappers, Chinooks, Cougars, Dogs, Slammers, Milkman, mm. and more within two hours. Yeah, with, that's awesome. within driving distance. Right. Um, mostly within an hour. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite one to go to? What's your favorite non-MLB ballpark to go to, hmm. and why? Hmm. That's not two questions. It's just one. That's a that's a part A and a part B. <laughs> right. I like it. Um, in the teams that you named, okay, um, I've been to pretty much all of them, and there and again. That wasn't all of them. Because of our right. map, we found an additional five to ten teams that were within what we consider driving distance, right. within two hours. Um, and like you said, between an hour and two hours, and that's even hitting the cities, Milwaukee, um, you know, both sides of Chicago, whatever. But when you're talking about the minor league parks, there are some of those that I've been to that I actually, honestly, I'm not crazy about, don't have to go back to, and I won't name names. Okay. Yeah. I'm asking for the favorite, not the worst. Right? But my nice. favorite, my favorite, and I know we've talked about it in the past, but my favorite of those, um, I, I would actually, I'm going to pick two. I enjoy going to Beloit Snappers games because of my time with the family. I know I've talked about that in the past. Um, and what's interesting is they're going to get a new ballpark, and it's going to be interesting for us to kind of check out the new digs this season. We will go to a game this season and let you guys know what that's like. Um, but going to the Milwaukee Milkmen, I think, and that's actually just south of Milwaukee, so it's not even an hour from our house. Um, I think that might be the most beautiful, um, almost kind of like a... A hidden jewel type of a thing. It's like turf. Yeah. It's different. It's different. It looks really nice. I like that whole area. They have a whole kind of like a, I don't know, like a sport complex there, right. which is really pretty cool. Yeah. So Milwaukee Milkman at the Rock Center, I think, is right there what it is. Yeah. ROC. Um, yeah. Really kind of a badass place to take in a ball game. Yeah. Um, I totally agree. Milkman uh, would be at the top of my list. My son played in a baseball tournament yeah. there. Where they got the um, MLB, you know, dimensions, dimensions yeah, on the ballpark. That was a cool. That's you know, a really cool place to it catch is it. It's really cool, and their turf. So if it rains, the kids can play immediately when it stops raining, which yeah. is nice. Great facility, I, and I almost feel like, based on what we see on the map, there's a lot of places like that around the country that are kind of like sports complexes yeah. with a minor league park in it, which is super cool. I'm so. Going all right, number two. Question two already. All Let's right, uh, use of foreign substances is coming a lot, uh, up a lot uh, in terms of pitchers, right? Yeah, pitchers especially. Um, so it seems there's two schools of thoughts on this. One is that you're, you're a cheater if mm -hmm. you do that. Absolutely. Right? The second is that, all right, you know, it's against the rules. However, everybody's done it. Everybody's done it in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and... If it gives the pitchers a little bit more control, maybe I'm less likely to get hit, and I'm okay with it as a batter, right? Um, mm -hmm. However, uh, you know, you look at, like, Trevor Bauer. Yeah, that's um, the person that everybody looks to. Right. He's always digging in his mitt. Right, yeah. And He's grabbing his mitt like this. What does he have right at the palm of his so, mitt? So, and not only that, but a stat came out today where it's like, the first time he gets a ball out of the umpire's bag, mm -hmm. he touches his that spot like 60 something percent of the time <laughs> however on a second pitch baseball all statistics right. all the time on a second pitch he's not touching it doesn't so, need to right it's why already, it's already mm. got the gunk on it oh right? it's got the gunk on it anyhow right anyhow god you um, hate that guy so much where where are you on this debate mm -hmm. uh, on the you know are they a cheater or is this yeah. just part of the game that we've been having for years? You know, um, 
I honestly, when I think about the foreign substance, I know this is this has been going on forever, and it you know was really made up in Major League in the movie Major League, where um, you have you have a character in the film. Why can't I think of his name? Harris, who is older, and he's making fun of Ricky Vaughn because he's a he's a hot, you know. But, you know, fastball throwing young kid, but he ain't going to have that forever. His arm's going to go away. And he starts showing Crisco, Vagisil <laughs> all over. It's been, a, it's been a thing forever. Pitchers have always kind of had this game where they move the collar of their shirt and run underneath it is a substance that'll give them a little more grip or give them a little more turn and, and, and a zip on their curveball or whatever. So this has always been a thing. I do attribute the same kind of thing to the pine tar with a with a baseball player having feeling like they have better control of their bat. A ball a pitcher has better control, and I think it's an important part to know that they can throw a pitch in the zone. Whether they can commit, that still is down to the pitcher. Pitcher's got to be able to throw that good pitch. Um, but to be able to throw it near the strike zone, then it's up to the hitters to be able to hit. It's not like it's unhittable because Trevor Bauer is putting that spin rate on it. It's just, you know, is it something that uh, is giving them an advantage? I don't know. I imagine it's kind of somewhat marginal, and I don't think it's any more really crazy now than it has been in the past. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Um, yeah, I don't mind. I... <laughs> I, in terms of player safety, I think there's a legit ar- argument there. You know, if you're sweaty, right. it's a hot day, you know, and the ball's slipping out and you're hitting somebody in the face, that's a problem, right? Right. If they give you a rosin bag and stuff, I mean, and they're not stopping you from, like, using your sweat to, to help you get a grip, too. I mean, all those things are what's what's available to you yeah. and I, I mean again it's pine tar is something that's welcome for the baseball players to use to hold on to their bats so yeah. i don't know yeah not crazy about changing it and i don't really care i'm definitely not going to look at statistics on what trevor bauer's doing with his pitches mm-hmm. i know you can't i know it just made you throw up a little bit you threw right. up a little bit right. when you were talking okay so, question three question moving on. three i got a compliment on this here hat from the woo socks the woo socks that's Wooster. a new brand refresh. Wooster. No, it's a new team. I would you could say a new team. Wooster? Wooster. Wooster. Wo- they're, they're called the Woo Sox. They're the Wooster Red Sox. Yeah. yeah. It's spelled Worcester. Worcester. We don't right. know that shit. When I'm we're just out, trying we're to not say it here in the Midwest. Midwest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, how do you say it? Is it Worcestershire? Uh, is it uh, Worcestershire? Something like that. I put it on my steaks. <laughs> anyway. So actually, um, so I made an order. I actually wanted a paw socks hat with the polar bear. That's a good um, one. Sold out in my size. So I, I went ahead and bought the whole family, uh, the kids all paw socks hats that were in stock. Right. And the, Last, final edition of those. That right. team is gone. And the adults got woo socks hats. So we right. got four hats. Nice. In the family. Anyhow, um, hmm. it got me thinking about defunct teams' mm. hats. Uh, what is your favorite hat that you own I can't be bought anymore. Well, I'll be damned. Like, again, I don't know the questions he's going to ask. <laughs> I never know ahead of time. But take a look at the hat I'm wearing today. Bay Bears, yeah. Right. A Mobile oh, Bay Bears hat. So, again, I get real sentimental about this shit. He clowns me about this. I get real sentimental about these things where the teams are going away. I was even sad about the Paw Sox. I don't know a damn thing about that team. But... Rhode Island lost their franchise. They were supposed to have a farewell season last year and never got to have it. And so that really kind of made me sad. Plus, their gear is fire. I like that Polar Bear logo. And now they have this weird smiley face. Yeah. I think it's really cool. Nice hat, bro. Anyway. So, but the Bay Bears. I mean, I love the color scheme that they had. It's got a dark blue. It's got the kind of like a powder blue. And almost, it's like a... It's kind of like a beige color, a tan color to it. It's a unique color scheme. I actually have two Bay Bears hats. And don't think for a minute, I haven't gone on eBay to try to find other ones. I, I, got, a, I got an alert right. coming. I, Mobile Bay Bears gets posted on there. I got to see if there's a hat getting posted on there. Right. I'm always looking to replace just in case. Hats don't last forever. So you got to be able to get those. That's my defunct team. Has a special place in my heart. 
Mobile Bay Bears. Yeah, we're both on the London Rippers alert. Yeah, you big know? time. But um, that's a crazy. That is a crazy story. A right. really unique franchise. I mean, we can even say Lake County Fielders locally right. by us. Exactly. Kevin Costner's team that we right. almost had for a, almost a full yeah. season, maybe almost. Yeah. Couple weeks. So yeah, those are those are the cool ones, man. If you get your hands on something like that, there's some real limited edition stuff. I'm, cool. I'm pretty sure nobody watching is gonna believe that I asked this question and you happen to be wearing that hat. No one's on gonna believe it. But as soon as you, I'm like, damn, I'm wearing a Bay Bears hat. All right. Um, and I don't think I've worn this hat before. Anyway. Anyhow. Three questions in. We've yeah. got some fresh beer you picked up during a baseball tournament in Wisconsin. Tell us about yeah. it. Uh, so Raised Grain happened to be uh, two minutes away from um, a tournament that I was at with my son in mm-hmm. Waukesha, Wisconsin. So Raised Grain uh, has a Mellorillo. Mellorillo. And That's what? a hazy IPA. Fuzzy Fuzzy. That's a peach sour ale. A I'm peach drinking that. Sour ale, yeah. Uh, both great. Uh, pretty good beers. The hazy IPA, I like a lot. The fuzzy fuzzy, not as sour as a typical sour beer. Right. Kind of tastes like a peach cider to me. Yeah, almost. Still pretty good though. Yeah, like a shandy, maybe a peach shandy. Yeah. I thought of, I'm trying to think of what it would be. Right. I I like it though. Yeah. And th- I like peach. Not everybody's crazy about it. We've yeah. had some really good peach beers. I love the fact you're able to go to Waukesha. Pick these up. You said they were affordable, too. Pretty affordable. Yeah. Um, at, at this point in our beer journey... Yeah, uh, that's a good way to put it. A, a few bucks a beer is, is affordable. Once you get into the, you know, five, six dollars a beer, it starts, you know... Yeah. You're like, Ugh, but can I do it because it's cherry right. and delicious? Yes, right. probably. So, But yeah, it seems affordable. They didn't have any kind of growlers or anything like that, right? So we stuck to cans. No, I, I think I could have got the Melorillo in a growler. Mm. I forgot to bring my glass. With it. And and they had them in the fridge right next to the fuzzy fuzzy that I wanted. So I'm like, just, just when just your son's kidding. in a baseball tournament, you have to bring your growler. Have that shit in the car. That's the lesson we learned today. <laughs> Question four. Let's go. All right. Uh, starting a few years ago, at least around here, probably um, I would imagine around the country, theaters that you go to watch movie in started to upgrade their seats. Yeah. Got these big old seats, recliners. Oh yeah. You know you. All of a sudden, you could reserve your seat, and then you could walk in 20 minutes late, didn't have to watch previews, you know, and you still had your seat right where you wanted it. It's like a love seat in right. some cases. It's fantastic. Yeah, those are nice. I love it. You also pay more. Yeah. Right? So you pay more, and there's also less people in the theater, mm-hmm. which alters the experience. I think, you know, sometimes for a comedy, you got the big group laughing. Mm-hmm. And it, it's a different mm-hmm. experience. Anyhow. I think there's a parallel to baseball. In Montana, we just got seats at a fire pit. Mm, damn it. I love fire pits. Right. So um, they're doing the same thing. They're knocking out a bunch of seats. Yeah. Those are places where you could have seats. Right. A yeah. row of seats. So, you know, it's at least two for one. They're giving up, you know, right. seats for fire pit room and all that stuff. Um, but the price is more. Just like, just like with the theaters. And uh, and there's less people now. Yeah. Right? So this is the thing that's happening not just at the Missoula Paddleheads, but you know across the country. I said right. at the Milwaukee Brewers in a in an area similar. Right. Kind of like a four four chair tabletop right. setup. Yeah. So what do you think about spending more money for premium seats at baseball games at the expense of you know people, you know less mm. people at the game and you know why not? Okay. So. I, I will say this as somebody who's going to plenty of games where you notice that there isn't a lot of attendance. Yes, I'm a Sox fan, right? So I do think there's something to be said for being at a game when it's close or when it matters in the standings and there's a lot of people around and it kind of makes the excitement a little more rich, right? I imagine that's really what it's like when you go to any Cubs game when the baseball matters. But even if not, they're always selling out. In a minor league, I mean, we just watched a documentary where they are selling out the stadium and there are people all packed into the place. So when there's a run around in the bottom of the ninth, they're trailing by a run, it's exciting. I do think there's value in that. But, but, when we had the opportunity to get our seats in Montana around a fire pit 
and to be able to have that kind of space to lounge around with your friends. I don't even know what the chairs are like. I just imagine us being like outside in the, you know, the backyard, taking in a ball game, any experience like that. So you're talking about a, a, a recliner, a, a love seat at a movie, or a patio furniture at a baseball game. Why wouldn't you want that experience? People are always saying they don't want to go to a sporting event because they could watch it at home. Well, if you can take some of those home elements and put them in a ballpark, I bet you you could get more and more people to come out. Why are we trying to change the game so much instead of changing the experience? So uh, for me, totally easy decision. I loved the uh, recliner seats at theaters where mm-hmm. I don't have to, like, literally touch some dude next yeah, to me. Yeah, somebody right next to you. All. Same Absolutely. thing at the baseball games. Right. You know, you're crammed in those You're crammed in, seats. man. I don't have to do that next to the fire pit, you know. So I'm in love with it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, and, that's a few, maybe that's the future. And by the way, the Milkmen have the Lux Bay seats. Mm-hmm. We haven't gotten yet. I think there's a minimum six Six, seven. those are that's patio furniture, yeah, yeah, those yeah. are really like really you can like lay out in that right. shit. That's nice. And you, okay. gotta, you got a uh, server to bring you, yeah, food and stuff, yeah. Why not? If you can do it, We're man, maybe you go to less that. games a year, but you can go in and take it in, and it's an experience. Right. That's cool. So, all right, question five, let's wrap it up, dude. Put a ball on it. Hurry Since up. Since your mean Mercedes violated basic standards <laughs> of respectful play, violated, I mean, it sounds like he's done something bad, right. Yeah, he did. He he had a home a run tonight, pitch, by the way. And, um, whatever. And, Go ahead. And, and, and so he ran up to score. This is a basic standard of respect that exists across all sports. Evolved. You don't run up to score uh, disrespectfully, right? Okay. And so, anyway, um, the White Sox, since that happened mm-hmm. uh, against the Twins, the White Sox have lost five of eight games, including being shut out two times. Um, do you think the baseball gods or just karma in general are at work here, or is there what's going on? What's going on? So you're so I just want everybody to understand. Corey thinks that because your mean Mercedes swung at a 46 mile an hour meatball in a blowout game thrown by a position player up, who shouldn't have been runs, who shouldn't have been on a the mound. Game. What is he supposed to anyway? He thinks that because that, that happened, now the White Sox have lost some games. I would argue we had Jose Abreu injured for a few days, had to miss the twin series, come back in time for the Yankees, a couple of close games against the Yankees. That was, I mean, those are two really good That's teams what, right? playing. Yeah, they got, I mean, technically, yeah, I, mean, I mean, technically they lost three games, yeah. But two of them they should have won. Bullpen caves a little bit. We're not scoring runs. That's not your mean Mercedes fault, dude. There's no voodoo dolls, bro. Man, losing those close games, it's like the gods are just striking down on no, you, right? that's not a real thing. Why? When people say dumb shit like this, I don't understand. There's no baseball gods controlling oh, 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 what happened. You just jinxed your I whole season. season. I didn't jinx it's it. It's over. I didn't jinx it's it. It's over. I <laughs> We're okay. Wow. We're gonna be all right. I we can't have. You just said that. We have some of the most. We have some of the most crazy injuries on our team. We got a pe- torn pectoral in spring training. We got the, one of the best young players in the game tore his damn thigh off, and unfortunately, he won't be back around for a month and a half. So we're gonna make do. And oh, in the meantime, we're still in first place. Don't so, you worry about White Sox. You right. stay the hell out of White I, Sox business. I knew that was gonna be your answer. So hmm. question five B. Oh, there's a B. So why when I text you that hey the White Sox uh, happen to have a no hitter? It would be really awesome if you guys all watched the no hitter. Hey guys, did you know there's a no hitter? The White Sox are pitching. Love doing that shit. You love. love uh, you love to hate me. <laughs> For sending those texts out. But because the baseball guys don't like that <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right. And I'm not crazy. All right. All Man. right. So they exist sometimes, but sometimes. not always. Especially when it benefits us. Right. Anyway, that's five questions. What can you do? I did the best I could. He just won't let some of this shit go. Some good questions, though, this week. I really enjoyed them. Nice hat, too, by the way. If you enjoyed this, make sure you continue to watch us each week. And if you haven't seen the previous installments of Five Questions, go check them out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere you can see our videos. we got lots for you. We'll have more next week. He'll have more questions. I'll get pissed. We'll see what happens. Until then.